we're analyzing British American Tobacco stock ticker BTI to see if this high dividend yielding stock is on sale. We're using the Select 6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating an intrinsic value for British American Tobacco. Then we're giving a final rating to the business. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing British American Tobacco for your portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand BTI stock performance. Right now, British American Tobacco, which trades in New York under stock ticker BTI, trades for $32.31 per share. The company's primary listing is on the London Stock Exchange under ticker symbol BATS. Bats. In the last year, their stock price is down 23%. In the last five years, BAT stock price is down 35%. In the last 10 years, their stock price is down 39%. However, going back to the global financial crisis, in the last 18 years, British American stock price is up 77% overall. They're compounding at 3% annually. Right now, BTI pays a huge 8.13% dividend yield. Their average dividend yield throughout this two-decade time frame is in addition to these compounded returns. British American is trading a dollar above their 52-week low. The company's down $12 from their 52-week high. They're a very large business. They have a $72.5 billion market cap. The burning question is, why should we be taking a closer look at British American Tobacco? Well, following the acquisition of Reynolds America completed in July of 2017, British American Tobacco is neck and neck with Philip Morris International to be the largest listed global tobacco company. It's slightly larger than Philip Morris on a net revenue basis, but slightly smaller on total tobacco volume. British American's global drive brands are Dunhill, Kent, Pall Mall, Lucky Strike, and Rothmans. It also owns Newport and Camel in the United States. The firm also sells vapor e-cigarettes primarily through its Views brand, Heated Tobacco with Glow, as well as Velo Modern Oral Tobacco Products. British American Tobacco owns 29% of ITC Limited, the leading Indian cigarette maker. BTI traces its roots back to 1902 and it's headquartered in London, UK. Now that we have that background on the business, let's get into the numbers. Starting with metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. The average listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. Looking for a benchmark that's double this allows us to build in some margin of safety based off the quality of the business. BTI's returns on capital have slightly increased over this time. They've managed to be pretty steady, just very slightly above average. They earned 8.5% returns in their most recent fiscal year, and that's what they're averaging in a given year over this time, a percentage point and a half above a typical business. But this is down from the benchmark we'd be looking for, meaning this is an X starting things off on metric number one. Metric number two, we're looking for growth in the business. We need their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows to be up in the last five years, including until today. This metric is all or nothing. During this time, BTI's grown their revenues by 13%. Their earnings have increased by 10%. However, the company's free cash flows are slightly down. They've been right around this $12 billion mark, but they're down 2% overall during this time, meaning this is an X on metric number two. Next, for metric number three, we're looking for earnings per share growth in the last five years. This helps us look at how the company's fared from the view of an individual owner. BTI's earnings have grown by 10% and the company's bought back 1% of their shares, meaning this is a check on metric number three. British American Tobacco has slightly grown their earnings per share over this time. Metric number four, we're looking for free cash flow per share growth in the last five years. The company's free cash flows have just barely declined over this time, but with their marginal share buybacks, that's still not going to be enough to outpace their declines in their free cash flow. Their free cash flows per share are actually exactly flat over this time. We were looking for growth here, so technically this means this is an X. Recapping where we stand currently, through our first four metrics, we're split evenly. We have two checks and two Xs for British American. Metric number five, we're looking at how the company uses debt. We want BTI's net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow they've produced in their last five years. BTI's net debt has come down over this time. They took on quite a bit to fuel their Reynolds American acquisition in 2017. They ended their most recent fiscal year with $47 billion in net debt, but today the company is down to $39 billion in net debt. And in their last five fiscal years, when we add up their free cash flows, they produce $60 billion worth of free cash flow. That's more than enough to comfortably support their net debt position. This is a check on metric number five. British American looks highly cash flow generative relative to the debt they're using in their business. Before we get into the first of two different ways that we're going to value the business, it's time for our bonus. 
As our bonus, we're looking at British American Tobacco's dividend profile. Right now, BTI has a huge 8.13% dividend yield. That's one of the highest yields you'd be receiving from any business in the market, let alone a large and established business like BTI. It's about in line with Altria's dividend yield, but well above the dividend yield from Philip Morris. Even with their high dividends, people make mistakes by blindly chasing dividends, so we want the company to support these with their free cash flows. That's been the case in all five of these years. British American did cut their dividends per share from fiscal 2021 until fiscal 2022. That happened at the same time that their free cash flow slightly declined. However, they've raised their dividend over the last five years. Their free cash flows per share are flat. They've maintained a reasonable dividend payout ratio throughout this time and supported their dividends using their cash flows. While this is a snapshot of their last five years of performance and it's no guarantee for the future, British American's dividend is covered by their cash flows right now. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want their average five-year free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this gives a slight premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It's the first of two different ways we'll be estimating the value of British American tobacco. Right now, the company has a 121 billion US dollar enterprise value. This gives a perspective of BTI similar to it being a private company. By taking into account both their net debt and their market cap, we learned in the last five years, they produced produce $60 billion of free cash flow, meaning in an average year, they produce about $12 billion of free cash flow. When that's divided by their $121 billion enterprise value, we get about a 9.8% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. On a current basis, the company also produced about $11.9 billion of free cash flow in their last 12 months. When that's divided by their enterprise value, that gives us about a 9.75% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. Both of those are two and a half times the yield of the 10-year treasury. It's almost double the risk premium we'd be seeking, meaning this is a big check on metric number six. Don't just run out and go buy the business. We still want to come to a more concrete estimate of their fair value per share. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that, in my opinion, is the main reason to analyze British American tobacco, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to an estimate of their fair value per share. A DCF model is based off the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. BTI has had a low degree of business predictability in their past, especially with some of the company's acquisitions in recent years. This can impact the assumptions we're using for this model. Starting with a three-year average of their free cash flows, we're using historical assumptions to grow these into the future. It's up to you to figure out if these are going to be accurate or not for the business. Assuming they grow their three-year average free cash flows at 3% annually for the next 10 years, then in the decade from there, they'd be growing these at a rate of just 1% annually. We won't be adding in the company's tangible book value. If we're seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return Warren Buffett's looking for in addition to his margin of safety requirements. At today's valuations, it looks like an estimate of a fair value per share is around $39. That's $7 above their current stock price. There are some key points to be mindful of. BTI could have low business predictability in their future, just like in their past. This 15% discount rate is an estimate of total returns to shareholders based off their free cash flows. Their 8.13% dividend yield would already be included in this, meaning their stock price would not be appreciating by this full 15%. With their somewhat recent very large acquisition of Reynolds America and a couple other recent acquisitions, there are reasons why their book value might not be totally accurate for the business, so that's something to consider as well. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decision. In analyzing British American tobacco, stock tickers BTI and BATS, while there are ESG concerns around the business, BTI seems to be an asset light business that's focused on returning capital to shareholders. Similar to its other big tobacco peers in Philip Morris and Altria, we learned the company earns just above average returns on capital. The company's returns on capital are well below the returns earned by either Philip Morris or Altria. They may have the potential to increase into the future, but they've been quite steady for the past five years or so. Their revenues and their earnings are up, but their free cash flows are slightly down. They bought back just a marginally small amount of their shares. Even with their free cash flows being slightly down, they produce more than enough free cash flow to support their net debt position, and they comfortably support their dividends in all five of their last previous years. It's worth reiterating this analysis is not financial advice. 
BTI looks potentially attractive on both an average and a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. Those were giving quite a bit of risk premium to the yield of the 10 year treasury. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis, if you believe those assumptions are looking for that 15% rate of return and are comfortable with today's multiples, then it looks like an estimate of their fair value per share is around $39. That's $7 above their current stock price. So BTI might be worth digging into. Looking at all the factors of our analysis, British American Tobacco looks like a very strong candidate for further research. This is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decision. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, share your thoughts about BTI, and let me know what business you want me to look at in the comments below. Thanks for learning about British American Tobacco with me, and have a great day.